another angel appeared and he had a scroll in his hand. He unfurled the scroll and he read. He read from the scroll about earthquakes being appointed to strike in three places in this nation. He said three places have been marked out in this nation where massive earthquake of a large magnitude will break this nation apart. Oh, when the Lord first came, he said, after the earthquake, this nation will be torn into two, like how a paper will be torn into two. And ask him, why Lord? Because the Lord said, she is going to tear my land into two. When he said my land, he was referring to Israel. She is going to tear my land into two and I will tear this land into two. And you know, President Obama has vowed that before he leaves office next year, he will divide Israel into two, one half to the Palestinians and one half to Israel. He has vowed this to take place before he leaves office. Please pray that your president don't make that mistake. If he makes, if he ever make that, which he will surely do, then this nation will be divided into two by a great massive, massive earthquake. And this North America continent will be divided into two, two parts, directly in the center. In 2011, the last week of November, I was, I was fasting for three days on the top of Mount Sinai in Egypt. On the third day of my fast, I was seated on a rock drinking a cup of tea, just meditating the scriptures. Suddenly, I saw an angel about eight foot tall stand before me with a long drawn sword in his hand. And beside him appeared in a three-dimensional form the map of North America. And then he said, this is what will happen to the nation that will divide God's land into two. And then he put his sword and strike in the center of the U.S. And the continent split it into two. At that time, I didn't know that there is a massive, massive earthquake fault line directly in the center of the U.S. When it strikes, the continent will, will divide into two. And the sea from the Gulf of Mexico will wash interland, come interland. These are real things. Real things right at your doorstep, before your nostrils. Please, I humbly beg you, pray much for your president. It is possible, if the church prays, your president can be prevented from making a terrible mistake. It can be prevented. If all Christians pray, your prayers will surround him with righteousness and he will not make a mistake, at least not in his time. And the nation will be spared another breather season. Then the third visitation I had was at Los Angeles airport waiting to board the flight to go to Houston. I was standing in the queue waiting for my number to be called. Suddenly I heard a voice, this city will be destroyed by an earthquake. I turned around and I saw a huge angel standing beside me. I said, why? I said, why? What wrong did this nation do? Or oh, now he was referring to Los Angeles city. What wrong did they do? The angel looked at me and the look on his face showed me how come you don't know? How come you do not know all this? 
that was the look on his face. He said, don't you know that this city is full of obstinate and stubborn people who are worse than the people of Sodom and Gomorrah? You know, all throughout the journey from Los Angeles to Houston, my heart was filled with sadness because in a spate of one week, three times, I heard the word of the Lord saying the same thing. I didn't know why. Never in my entire life I've ever received a word repeated three times in one week. Never. I was wondering why, all throughout the three hour flight journey. Why? Why did the Lord spoke three times the same subject over and over again? After arriving in Houston, two days later, the Supreme Court passed the bill. Same sex marriage passed in the US. Only then I realized why three times they used the word worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, later that day, at 11.50 in the morning, when I continued to wait on the Lord, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. And he looked at me and said, Come, let's take a walk. When he said that, my spirit came out of my body and together we were walking down Pennsylvania Avenue in the D.C., and we walked down the Capitol. And when we walked near and stood before the Capitol, the Lord Jesus looked at the building and he told me this. Here, many abominations take place. Uncleanness and sexual orgies take place even in their offices. This is quite similar to what is written in Romans chapter 1, verses 29 to 32. This place will burn with my fire. And then I did some research, you know, about the capital. I found that on August the 24th, in 1814, during the war of 1812, the capital was partially burned was burned by the British people. And I kept on wondering, you know, when we were driving by the highway from the airport, I had an open vision of the Capitol. I thought to myself, why did I saw the Capitol? Why didn't I see the Supreme Court? Or why not the White House? Among the many wonderful buildings in the Capitol, why the Capitol? And then, I also wondered why did the Lord compare this nation to Ahab and Jezebel? You know, I, I started wondering, there must be some connection. If not, why would the Lord use a simile like that? So, I googled to the history of capital and this is what an interesting discovery that I made. The word capital is a Latin word associated with the Roman temple dedicated to Jupiter. The United States Capitol is the seat of the United States Congress, the legislative branch of the US federal government. It sits atop Capitol Hill at the eastern end of the National Mall in Washington DC. Now, that was very interesting that it was built on a hill. King Ahab built all his groves and altars on top of a hill. If you read 1 Kings chapter 14 verse 23, 2 Kings 17, 10, 2 Chronicles 33, 3 and 19, and Jeremiah 17, 2, every false altars to Ashtaroth were all built on a hill and they are called groves groups, altars on the hills and God said I will destroy this place. In Micah, Micah chapter 5 verse 14, the Lord said I will destroy all the groups 
and all the place. So while we were standing there after saying that, I told the Lord, shall we go into this capital? He said, no, I don't want to go in there. Let's walk. He didn't want to go inside the capital. So we walked and came near to the White House. And he looked at the White House. There was a change on his face. A kindness came over his face, which I did not see when we stood before the Capitol. There was like a sternness. But here now, a little kindness came on his face and he said, many praying leaders were here. Meaning in the past, many praying leaders were here. So I, I was intrigued by that. So I did a little research and I found that on November 1st, in the year 1800, John Adams became the first president to take residence in the White House. On the second day of his stay in the house, he wrote a letter to his wife Abigail containing a prayer for the house. Adams wrote, I pray heaven to bestow the best blessings on this house and all that shall hereafter inhabit it. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. This was the prayer of John Adams. But that's not true today. Right? It's not true today. Many are praying with tears in this place. Which I was made to understand among the White House staff, there are many godly Christians who pray there unbeknown to others. Say their tears are dropping in their place. Maybe that's the reason why there was some kind of kindness on the face of the Lord towards the White House. And as we were speaking, I saw a slithering green anaconda sized like snake seated on a sofa in the Oval Office. You know, the, the way that the snake was seated on the sofa, it didn't look like a snake sitting on the sofa, but like a seductress seated seductively on a sofa, you know, that kind of a position. But it's, instead of a woman, it's a snake. Long anaconda size, like huge green color snake. So when I saw all this, I prayed ardently before the Lord for the US. Similar to how Abraham prayed. You know, I came to the U.S. first in 91. And from 91 right up to now, I visited the U.S. every year. And we have close to a 1,000 partners who support our ministry. And more than 1,000 people who pray for our ministry. Good, sincere Americans. So I remembered all of them. And the many, many pastors that I know in the U.S. And now I come to know all of you wonderful saints. So I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, you said, you heard the prayer of Abraham. If there were 50 righteous people, you will not destroy it. And Abraham came down to 10 righteous people. And you told him that if there are 10 righteous people, you will not destroy the city. I said, Lord, I can guarantee you there are more than 10 righteous people in this nation. If I do not know about everybody else, at least I know that there are 1,000 of my partners who are righteous. <laughs> That's for your sake, you know. Right? For your sake. And the Lord looked at me and he said, you know, the difference between Sodom and Gomorrah and the U.S. is this. The reason why I heard Abraham's prayer and the reason why I will not he hear yours is the difference is this. He said, 
Sodom and Gomorrah did not know me and was given over to sin, whereas the U.S. had turned her back against me. Now that's the difference. Sodom and Gomorrah did not know God. She was totally given to sin. So Abraham's prayer was effective because he was one man standing in the gap for a nation. Whereas this nation, which was founded on righteousness, your first president, Josh Washington, he knelt down, cried unto God, and dedicated this land unto God. Last year, the Lord revealed to me, among many of your presidents, there are four righteous ones in heaven. There may be others in heaven, but among the many, God sees four of them who are very, very righteous and they are standing before God for America. Four righteous presidents. So, America is not a nation who doesn't know God. But she has turned her back away from God. If you have a king who says, this is not a Christian nation, how low you have sink, right? You have gone down so low. You don't stand a chance like Sodom and Gomorrah anymore. You disqualified. In the early days, now this is another discovery I made. In the early days, when the capital was built, the capital had church services on every Sundays. And the third president of the U.S., Thomas Jefferson, and the fourth president of the U.S., James Madison, attended church every Sunday. The state became the church. But now, there are voices in the nation who calls for separation of state and church. Once upon a time, they were together, they were one. They were not two, they were one. But now, it's separated. So if they are separated, God will judge you differently. Abomination of desolation is going to destroy this nation. And this abomination will also creep cunningly into the churches. My dear brothers and sisters, this is part one of the word of God. Tomorrow, I will share with you part two, which I received this morning from none other than the mighty warrior angel Michael. He came and stood before me and he spoke for half an hour about the next part of this word. Now let, let us recap as we close. Now, God sees bad things in the nation. God sees abomination in the nation. But, it's not, there is, there's no hope for this nation. There is. And what, what must do? Elijah must rise up. That is the counsel of the Lord for you. Elijah must rise up. Elijah means two things. The church and the Christian leaders. They must rise up. They must stand up for righteousness. God is looking for such people. Elijah must rise up. If the Elijah rise up and they stand up and they contend for righteousness and godliness, this nation can be saved. Amen. All these destructions and these calamities can be avoided. Oops, I forgot to share with you one very important point. When the Lord revealed about divine judgment coming upon the White House, I told you about this angel of destruction. Do you remember that? Yes. He's going to strike the Capitol and the Supreme Court. And then the Lord said, He has sharpened His sword to strike this nation 
with a series of earthquakes to chastise and discipline the nation. Towards what? Towards repentance. Then he said, if this does not humble them, then seven other calamities of natural destruction are appointed to come. Now let me repeat one more time. Mercy can triumph over judgment. All is not lost. I have come sent to warn. Like Jonah was sent to warn. There is hope. Like there was hope for Nineveh. You know, the king of Nineveh, an unrighteous, wicked man, he said, who knows if God cannot be entreated? Who knows if he cannot forgive us? If an unrighteous, wicked king can say like that, how much more you, the people washed by the blood of Jesus Christ? How much more you? You have a greater right to come and stand before God and demand, Lord, spare our nation. You have a greater right. Lord, spare our nation. Spare our nation. Help us to rise up once again to our former glory to be a white house. True white house. White house of purity. White house of holiness. White house of faith. You know the Statue of Liberty standing in the Hudson River is not only there Putting, holding up her flames as a statue of liberty for all those weary, laden to come to America to find rest and solace and freedom. No. The church should be like that, holding up that torch of holiness. Amen. Holding up the torch of righteousness. Amen. Saying, this is that standard. You hold it up and show to the rest of the world, this is the standard. You know you were originally raised for that purpose? You were originally raised for that purpose? Amen. Why has that fire been extinguished? Why? Why has the fire gone out? You know, this fire has now gone to Asia. It has now gone to Africa. Now they are holding up that torch which was once upon a time in your hands. Won't you get it back again? You can. If you want to. Let's pray. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If these words bear witness with your spirits, ask yourself now, what am I going to do about it? What is my church going to do about it? What is the collective church leadership in our community, in our town, in our city going to do about it? How are we going to trumpet this warning from coast to coast in the country? What am I going to do? Remember Abraham. He bent his knees. He held on to the hands of God and he pleaded with love and compassion. Remember Moses. He held on to the hands of God and he said, Lord, if you will strike the Israelites, first you strike me. Strike my name from the book of life. He was willing to lay down his life. 
even to to the point of losing his salvation for the saving grace upon his nation do you love your nation so much that you are willing to do like that jeremiah cried day and night for the perishing daughters of jerusalem he said oh my head as waters my eyes like fountains of tears that i cry day and night can the son of man find faith among these who are here if you are here cannot put away sin from your life and live a consecrated life unto righteousness what hope is there for the unbelieving people in this nation this is a question the lord jesus is asking you if you compromise the standards of god if you compromise godly principles and holiness and allow filth and abomination to come into my house what hope is there for the unbelieving people in your nation when my house which is called by my name is a place of darkness without any light what hope is there for those who are always sitting in darkness if you will refuse to pay heed to my voice and turn back from your unrighteousness what hope is there for them who are the children of unrighteousness thank you wonderful lord jesus i see the lord jesus christ standing at the back of this church near where the cameraman is standing and he unfurls a long scroll and the scroll stretches out opens up all the way right up to the front here and he is reading in the scroll and in the scroll is written the many many promises that were given to the many churches your callings your giftings to the many churches and to the many ministries and to the many leaders what have they done god is a covenant keeping god but when you break your part of the covenant then the covenant becomes null and void thank you wonderful lord jesus the lord jesus tells me now all the pastors who are gathered here if you can come together and bend your knees and pray bring your people together bend your knees and pray and seek my face i who spared nineve won't i spare you break down all the walls that you have built around you break those walls come together 
in the bond of unity. Break, break those walls and tear away those masks of falsehood, those masks of hypocrisy. Tear them away and present your naked heart before your God. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. And I see the Lord Jesus pointing to me, written in the scrolls. Angels have been appointed to stand guard over your churches. And these angels have been commanded to instruct, to lead, to guide you into the ways and the purposes of God. If you be willing to pay heat, if you be willing to sanctify a fast in your church, to call for a corporate body to fast and seek the face of your God, then you will be not known, you will be made known the ways of God. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see these angels appointed for your churches, equipped and laden with gifts for your church. Gifts for the leadership and gifts for the common believers. Even gifts for the little children. Even for the suckling babies, thoughtless, they have gifts for them. Gifts for the youths. Gifts for the senior citizens. But first, you must cleanse your house. Cleanse your house and put it in order for the glory of God to come in. If you be willing and be sincere, I see these angels with drawn swords and they will show you what are the things that causes contamination in your church. And also, if you be willing to allow God to cut down the unfruitful branches and the dead leaves that are still hanging on, then you will be pruned to bring forth more fruit, abundant fruit, and you will become a glorious tree of life. Your church will become a glorious tree of life to bless your community. The Bible says, the tree of life bears forth 12 kinds of fruits and its leaves are for the healing of the nations and your church will become like that. It will bring forth those kind of fruits and will bring forth those leaves of healing that will heal your community. It will feed your community with spiritual food and natural food. These are the days the true people of God will see the God of Israel in action like how he fed, he watered, and he protected three million Israelites in the wilderness. He sustained them supernaturally for 40 years. Your eyes will see what happened then is also true for this day. Amen. You will see multiplication of food in your homes. You will see multiplication of resources when you walk in obedience with God. When you are willing to cleanse the temple and consecrate it and rededicate it 
to the Lord your God. Again, I hear the Lord Jesus saying, Tell my ministers to seek me with all their heart, to lay down the strongholds, lay down their petty quarrels, their petty indifferences, lay it down. And embrace my love. And embrace my love for each other. Again and again the word comes unto me. Cleanse the temple. For the glory of God is going to come. Cleanse the temple. Thank you, wonderful God. Shall we all stand up for prayer? Holy Father, I have committed to your children all the words that you have shown to me. Lord, I pray. They who have ears to hear have heard it. And they who have hearts to understand have understood it. And now I pray, Lord, show them what they should do. Show them, Lord. You are our God. You are our Redeemer. You are our Sustainer. There is none like you, Lord. We have no other God except you, Lord. To whom will we go, Lord? Except you. To you alone, we will raise up our hands and lift up our voices and make our cries known to you. Oh God, spare your people. Spare your nation, Lord. Spare your people whom you chose from the four corners of this earth. Spare your people, Lord. Remember all the good she has done, Lord. Remember, Lord, the many, many missionaries who have gone out from this land and they never returned back home, Lord. They laid down their lives in the nations for which you sent them. Lord, remember how this great nation has helped the poor. They have fed the poor. They have clothed the poor. They have given food to the hungry. They have given clothes to the naked. Lord, they have brought your eternal word to the four corners of this world. Remember, Lord. Remember. Remember. Your word tells us you are not unrighteous to forget all the good works that we have done in your name. But you always remember. So now I ask you, please remember, Lord. Please remember. Please remember. The millions of believers in Asia Millions of believers in Russia, in Africa, because of these Americans, Lord. Because of them, Lord. Because they sent for their money. They sent for the word. They sent for their missionaries. Lord in heaven, remember. Remember, Lord. Remember. You are not unrighteous to forget. Remember, Lord. Remember. Lord, you showed me that the tears of Josh Washington are still fresh before your eyes. They are still those tears soaked sand is kept in heaven. And the tears' voice are still coming up before your ears. 
remember lord remember remember lord remember we lift up our hands to you now lord and we ask you lord uniting all of us together right now lord we pray let your mercy triumph over judgment lord let your mercy you are rich in mercies you are a good god full of riches in mercy remember lord remember lord jesus oh loving father remember the wounds of the lord jesus look at his hands lord those holes in his hands look at his legs the holes on his legs look at his forehead all those marks from the crown of thorns look at his back look at his thighs all the stripes and the tearing the scarred flesh and the wounds and the scars from the whips lord jesus oh holy god look at all that look at all that all that is for this great nation lord all that for this great nation remember that lord remember that remember that remember the blood of jesus lord it is true the blood of the innocent is crying out to you it is true the cries of the sins of this land are crying out to you it's true however lord the blood of jesus is shouting louder than the cries lord that blood of jesus is crying louder it is crying louder for this nation than all of the cries lord oh lord oh lord god you are full of goodness abundant in goodness abundant in truth long suffering you are slow to anger of great kindness remember lord remember remember lord remember lord god your people have heard your word today they have determined in their hearts they are not going to rest until <laughs> they are not going to give you any rest until you make this nation a nation of praise and glory for you lord they are not going to rest lord they are not going to give you rest until you bless this land until mercy will triumph over judgment lord they have determined they are going to seek your face they have determined they are going to fast and pray they have determined to stand in the gap and hold your hands lord so remember lord remember remember all this lord jesus and i pray yes lord they will surely do this lord they will surely do this lord they will surely do i pray you will spare this nation lord spare this nation lord let her not be ashamed before her enemies lord let her not be ashamed before her enemies lord already now the muslim nations are sneering at her they are looking down upon her they are even saying oh the eagle has fallen the eagle's feathers have been plucked out lord they are sneering at her let not this nation be humiliated before her enemies lord remember lord how you have blessed this nation lord for your name's sake be merciful unto her be gracious unto her 
and help her Lord to, to taste your goodness one more time. One more time. Like Samson prayed, Lord, remember me one more time. So I pray, Lord, remember and strengthen this nation one more time. One more time, Lord. Let her arise from her ashes. Let her arise. And let the son of righteousness arise with healings on his wings over this nation, Lord. And let her be crowned with glory. Let her be clothed with glory and honor. And let her stand before you. Justified and sanctified, Lord. Thank you, Father. We lift up our hands to you. We give you thanks, O God, O Lord, our God, for hearing our prayer. And we know you will do, you will surely do a good work upon this nation, <coughs> upon the churches, and upon all your Christian leaders, Lord. Lord, we lift up the head of state of this nation before your presence right now, Lord. Lord, we pray. Hold him back from secret sins, Lord. Hold him back from presumptuous sins, Lord. Forgive him of his pride and arrogance, Lord. Fill him, Lord, with the knowledge of your will. Fill him, Lord, with righteousness. Make him taste and see your goodness. Fill him with the knowledge of your will. That he may know what is the good, the perfect and the acceptable will of God. Lord, we lift up all the secretaries, Lord. We lift up every senator. We lift up all the governors. We lift up all the military brass. We lift up all those in authority <clears throat> before your presence right now. Lord, fill them with your knowledge of your will, Lord. We pray that you will send forth your Holy Spirit to convict them of sin, of righteousness, and of the judgments of God. We pray that they will come out of the snare of the devil and make Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. Every one of our Supreme Court judges, we bless them with the knowledge of the Holy One of Israel, that they will not bow down to popular pressure, but they will bow down to the knowledge of the truth of righteousness, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will surround the borders of this nation with your presence as a wall of fire, Lord. Protect her, Lord, even from outside enemy forces. Only you can do it, Lord. Some trust in chariots, Lord. Some trust in horses. But we, your people, we put our trust in the Lord our God to protect our borders, to protect our families, to protect our children, and to protect your heritage, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's all lift up our holy hands and bless the name of the living God. Come on, open your heart and bless the name of God. He's a good God. His grace and mercy endures forever and ever. Come on, everybody, open your mouth and bless the name of the living God.